Hi everyone, my name is Eden Folgo, and today I'm here to talk to you about Sun Saluter. Sun Saluter is a nonprofit that I actually started working on in 2006. Uh, it started out as a science fair research project when I was in high school. So crazy that this was almost a decade ago. But today I want to share with you my journey building Sun Saluter, what it is, how it works, and how I got to where we are today, where we are impacting 17,000 people in 19 countries. And it was not an easy journey. Um, and, you know, I've listened to a lot of great stories, but I've always wanted to know more about the nitty gritty, about how they got there, and some of the struggles that they faced. And I'd love to share with you some of mine with Sun Saluter here today. So, what is Sun Saluter? Sun Saluter is a device that rotates solar panels so that they will follow the sun at all points during the day. And the reason this is important is because normally when you go to the store and you buy a solar panel, it'll probably tell you there's some sort of output on it. Let's say 100 watts. But what they don't tell you is that you only get 100 watts if your solar panel is directly pointed at the sun, perpendicular to it. And of course, this works great if you know, you're, you know, this is the middle of the day and it's noon or something and the sun is directly overhead. But it means you're actually u losing a lot of electricity that you might otherwise be able to get in the morning or in the evening. And so a lot of different solutions have been developed to make solar tracking, which is what uh, rotating the solar panel is called, more accessible. However, a lot of them use very complex electronics. And so I wanted to experiment with a way to make solar tracking really easy. And at the time, I was a high school student. I didn't really you know, understand a lot of complex electronics. I, um, you know, I have a mechanical engineering background. I ended up going on to university to study mechanical engineering. And you know, I wanted something simple and intuitive. And the numbers don't lie. I went and I took a solar panel and I placed it flat on the ground. And then I went and put a solar panel and I made it manually just rotate. And I saw for myself that, wow, this actually works. So in my first year of university, I had a chance to travel to Kenya to try out this technology. I'd come up with a preliminary prototype for how to make a solar panel rotate without using electricity. Uh, I used this complex mechanism that had these metals that would expand and contract, and it would cause the solar panel to displace if I put a weight on one end of it. In any case, that was very complicated, but it was the first time that I ever took this product out into the field and I demonstrated it to users. And this was one of the very first feedback sessions that we ever got. Um, and I remember just everyone was super nice. Um, you know, they were so excited I was here. Uh, and they were, you know, sharing with me their experiences. But everyone was, at the end of it, they were like, we just don't think this will work. Uh, this technology, you know, you've built it with these materials that are not accessible to us. Yesterday, a cow tipped it over. Um, and all these children, we have all of these children who are playing around it. Like, we need to make sure this is safe for the kids. And, you know, I, it, in that moment, I realized, wow, I know nothing about designing products. Who was I to think that I could just roll in with this thing I made up in a lab and that I could just deploy it and it would magically work? And so I realized, you know what? I need to go back to the drawing board. I came up with this design. It doesn't work, but I want to keep working on this problem. And so, you know, instead of trying to, you know, deploy more systems, I decided I would spend the rest of my trip. I was there um, in East Africa for two months. I decided I would spend the rest of my trip learning more about them. Uh, you know, I stayed in many of their villages. I really wanted to learn their lifestyle and understand, you know, what are the resources that they have access to? If these complicated metal parts were, you know, not accessible, what would be? And so one of the things that I realized was this, a lot of the same people who lack access to electricity also lack access to clean water. But they have to gather water all the time. A lot of folks will actually wake up at like 5 in the morning. They'll get a jerry can or some sort of container. They'll go to a well or to a nearby river or lake. They'll fill up their jerry can, and then they'll take it home during the day. And they'll you know, use that water for cooking, for drinking. And sometimes, it's un most of the time, it's unfiltered. And sometimes it's contaminated, sometimes with biological contaminants, 
sometimes with chemical contaminants. And I realized there's this water problem and some of them also have access to solar panels, but the solar panels don't move. And you know, they've given me feedback that they went and you know, a nonprofit came in and gave them a solar panel, um, you know, usually in the form of a household system and they uh, you know, set it up and they, you know, the kit comes with like three lanterns and they'll find that most of the time you can only charge two of the lanterns. The third one never fully charges. And it's because you're not getting that, the amount of electricity that the manufacturer of the solar panel had claimed. And you know, so I realized that this was the ultimate application for something like a very low cost solar panel rotator. It's these sort of small household systems where they need access to clean water and they need access to electricity and they need more electricity. And you know, maybe there's a very cheap and accessible way that we can give them what they want. And so I developed after you know, 60, 70 different iterations, a sun saluter design that was intuitive and didn't require any technical knowledge to set up. So you can take a jerry can or a couple of soda bottles and fill them up with water, and you'll put them on the east side of your solar panel. On the west side of the solar panel, you'll put a counterweight. This could be you know, sand or gravel or maybe another you know, volume of water. That's roughly half the weight of the east side of the solar panel. And so at the very beginning of the day, your solar panel will be facing east. Throughout the entire day, your solar panel will gradually rotate because there's a small spigot in the jerry can container that will gradually drip water out. And it'll take a couple of days to calibrate this flow rate, but we recommend for a four liter system, roughly one drop every 15 seconds. And so this is something that, you know, water dripping is very easy for anyone to calibrate. You don't need to have technical knowledge to do that. And so throughout the day, the solar panel will rotate. And then at the very end of the day, the solar panel will be fully facing the west side and you'll have no more water on the east side. But while the water was dripping out throughout the entire day, it can pass through a water filter. And we decided to leave this water filtration uh, component up to the local communities, since in different places of the world, there are different types of water issues. So you know, in each deployment, these, um, these water filters can be customized for that particular household system. And so we've deployed sun saluters in many different settings. This is one of our uh, prototypes set up in uh, our office in India. And you can see you can set up many different sun saluters in a microgrid setting, in a household setting, on a flat rooftop, on the ground, and in a village, and at a community center. We recently deployed a number of sun saluters at a cyclone shelter in Odisha in eastern India. And so the sun saluters, we realized, were not just the technology, they were actually a platform to teach other people about the power of solar, why it's good to use clean energy, and that technology and invention isn't something that you have to have an engineering degree to be able to do. So we actually made the decision to start a nonprofit around this. And we decided to deploy the technology using volunteers and advocates um, in many different countries around the world. We partner with a lot of local implementation partners. We teach them how to build sun saluters. And then they go out and they actually share this knowledge. They set up workshops, they manufacture sun saluters, and they deploy them locally in their community. And, we, and I realized that using this model, we were actually able to reach more of the people we wanted to reach in the beginning, which is people who can't really afford to you know, buy a lot of energy, they can't afford a lot of resources, but they're the people who really need this knowledge the most. And so by using this technology, we realized that it should be free. We want this technology in the hands of as many people as possible. We want to give them the knowledge and they can do whatever they want with a sun saluter technology. I, back a few years ago, I actually made the decision to patent the sun saluter technology, but we've actually now open sourced it. So if you go onto our website, sunsaluter.org, you will see videos, photos, and a guide on how you can go to your local hardware store or you know, any, any setting, and you can use bamboo and wood and recycled metal to be able to build your own sun saluter. And you know, we hope to be able to translate this content over time and share it with as many people as possible. 
We've impacted 17,000 people so far, but I'd really like us to expand our reach. So please feel free to log on and build your own Sun Saluter and reach out to me and we would love to work together. Thank you so much. <laughs>